So guys, in today's video, we're going to give you guys a tutorial on how to potentially get the Polygon ZK EVM airdrop. This is just speculation. It's not guaranteed. There are airdrop rumors. It could be, it may not be. Nobody knows exactly. That's how airdrop hunting goes. So I just want to disclose that and put that up front. But as always, those willing to put in the work and mess around with some of these chains are able to get some pretty lucrative airdrops. If you guys receive the Arbitrum airdrop, you guys uh, already know how lucrative these can be. On average, users received about 1,250 Arbitrum tokens. This equates into about two or $2,500. And at maximum per wallet, you could have received 10,250 Arbitrum tokens, which equates to about $15,000, depending on the prices of Arbitrum at the time, of course. Now, let me explain why I believe there will potentially be a Polygon ZK EVM airdrop. First thing is if you go into one of the tweets that Sandeep Noel, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, he said, hey, look, plus there is no rule that an existing token can't do a massive airdrop, winky face. Okay, um, all right, awesome. And then if you go on to his Twitter profile, you see something that says a two. Now, either this is the second token, this is the second phase, he's got all roads leading back to Polygon. I don't know. Guys, this is just speculation. This is how airdrop hunting goes. But I'm just going to go into this tutorial instead of just like sharing a bunch of junk. But TLDR is if you did like, I don't know, 10 to $15 in transactions on Arbitrum, you would have received the minimum amount of tokens on Arbitrum which would be a couple of thousand dollars just for spending like 10 to $15 in gas fees, bridging, et cetera. All you had to do was get three points minimum. And that was bridging to Arbitrum and Arbitrum Nova. That would give you two points, some transactions over time. If you did it during two distinct months or six distinct months, et cetera, transaction frequency. These are just different things you have to look for. Optimism had their own little um, qualification. That was cool, fireworks. <laughs> Um, but all you had to do is be a user, a repeat user, a DAO voter, multi-sign or multi, whatever, a multi-sign signer, uh, donate to Gitcoin, priced out of Ethereum, etc. So these are different things you have to take into account. And Arbitrum actually came after Optimism. So you can see here, this is a little more vague on Optimism. And then Arbitrum gets even more specific. So I'm pretty sure there are going to be a couple of more specific qualifications on the Polygon CK EVM. So going based on this, the very first thing to do is to get some funds on the Polygon ZK EVM. All you have to do is simply bridge from Ethereum, Optimism, Arbitrum, ZK Sync, wherever you want to bridge. You can even do StarkNet. Yes, there will be an airdrop tutorial for StarkNet for a later video, but if you guys are in the Discord, you guys already have access to that. You guys know what to do. Links in the description below if you guys would like to join that Discord. It's the Patreon link. And you guys can get access to exclusive airdrops that I don't share on YouTube, as well as chat with a bunch of other DeFi DJs just like you. But in reality, the TLDR on how to get some airdrops, potentially for StarkNet, is use it. And you can find a list of different dApps to use on DeFi Llama. DeFi Llama is a pretty cool place. Um, to find different apps. But going back to the bridge, make sure you bridge some funds from Ethereum, Polygon, ZK, EVM, et cetera, just wherever. But the fees on this bridge, they're going to be relatively cheap. It's gonna be like a dollar. Now, this is the first bridge. This is Orbiter Finance. I would recommend also using the actual Polygon bridge. Um, yes, this is on Ethereum, so you are going to have some Ethereum gas fees, but gas fees are low. If you go on TX Street, TX Street will kind of give you like a breakdown of what the going gas fees are. It's going to cost you, if it's like 17 GUE to 20 GUE, which is what the current rates are right now, it's around 18 GUE. It's going to cost you maybe six bucks, five bucks in order to bridge from ETH to ZK EVM. If you don't have the funds to do that and you don't have any money on ETH, just resort to the uh, Orbiter Bridge. Now that would be the very first step, messing around with the bridge. Second is going to be making a swap on a couple of these DEXs. 
This is Mantis or Mantessa Finance. I'll drop a link in the description below for all of these things so you guys can go one by one and do whatever you want. But simply just swap a stable coin with another stable coin. The slippage actually isn't that bad with this. Um, like one and one is really not bad. You can also pool on this as well. But make sure you make a couple of transactions, play around with this, use it a bit. I wouldn't recommend pooling a lot of funds into something that's a, a newer Dex like Mantis um, or even eh, Dove Swap is kind of cool. But um, Mantis is a little bit newer. It has um, some lower TVL. You can simply go on to the DeFi Llama rankings and you can see the breakdown. Mantis has about $1.5 million in TVL. For me personally, uh, I would stick with QuickSwap if you're going to be using a larger amount of funds because this one, A, has the largest amount of TVL. B, it's proven itself over on Polygon, like the regular chain. So I don't feel it will rug. Um, at least it hasn't rugged for about three years. So why would they rug now? But that's just something to, actually two years. But that's just something to keep in mind. So going back to Mantis, Provide a little bit of liquidity, deposit, withdrawal, make some transactions, mess around, do a swap, make sure you spread this out over a couple of days. Or what you can do is do everything once and then come back a week later, do it again, or even a month later, do it all again. Just something to keep in mind. Remember, if you look on Arbitrum, transaction frequency, you conducted more than four transactions with more than four smart contracts. So you wanna mess around with different smart contracts and you want to mess around and make a couple of swaps. Do an approve, do a swap. Just mess around, use the different stuff. Uh, be careful with using a lot of money though, guys. This is airdrop speculation, mess around type of money. The next is Dove Swap. You can simply just make a swap, uh, pool some liquidity, um, and just have some fun. Just farm some yields and see what you can earn. Uh, I mean, the yields really aren't that bad. Um, but again, obviously DYOR, and if you guys want to provide liquidity on it, you can just make sure you look, some, look into the docs and understand what you're doing. On Doe Swap, simply what you do is say, hey, I want to swap one ETH for, I don't know, let's just call it some USDC. So, or I'm sorry, not one ETH. Let's, let's go in small terms. 0.01 ETH, and we'll make a swap, we'll get $17, and then you simply go over to pool, and then we'll select the wrapped ETH USDC. You also gotta make sure you have wrapped ETH. Um, you can simply wrap it by just doing this. Just go to the swap. Actually, let's make it spicy. We're gonna go over to quick swap to get another transaction. We're gonna go ahead and go swap over here. We're gonna go ahead and say, hey, I want some wrapped ETH. So all I would do, simply make a swap, and I would say 0.01 ETH for some wrapped ETH. And then it would give me 0 0.01 wrapped ETH. And then we go to the pool and we simply just say add liquidity. We're going to do it for ETH USDC. So 0 0.01. And then you hit deposit. It'll say deposit now. There's insufficient funds because there's no funds in the wallet right now. But that's it. You deposit and then you go to the farm and then deposit into the farm, which is right here. Uh, it says add liquidity, but when you have it, it'll say to deposit. So that's another thing that we can do. Now, the next is obviously quick swap. Now, quick swap, again, like I mentioned to you, I'm a little more comfortable with this one uh, over the others, just being that they have uh, been around and stood the test of time. And also, you can get some pretty spicy yields. If you take a look at some of the farming APRs, like for ETH Matic, 228%, ETH MATIC, 89%, uh, ETH USDC, 65%. This really isn't that bad. You get 45% uh, in the pool APR and 20% from the farm. The farm is going to be paid in the MATIC and QUIC token. But again, you'll be earning some yields from that. And then so we can interact with another smart contract, you would simply go to Gamma. Um, gamma Swap, you can actually access that here. And go to gamma this is a liquidity manager so this will automatically uh, rebalance the pool for you so your impermanent loss is not as significant when you're using quick swap it's a v3 model so the impermanent loss can be more intense tldr is if you don't want to see a lot of impermanent loss 
use something like gamma swap. Now, if you don't care, if you're providing liquidity for stable coins, doesn't matter. Again, I'll leave links in the description below for all of this, but you see you have the section for Polygon ZK EVM. All you gotta do is simply just deposit into the pool and it will do it for you. So you get swap fees reward and it will rebalance the pools. So now that we've made all these transactions, we've interacted with a couple of smart contracts. We did Mantis, we did Dove, we did Orbiter, we also did QuickSwap, and now we can mess around with a lending protocol. This is called OVX. Now, I know they had a previous hack like, I don't know, four or five months ago on this. So be careful loading up and messing around with this. I would, me personally, at least, what I would do is just deposit and then withdraw. I wouldn't recommend leaving funds in it. Um, it was more of an exploit, not really a hack. Uh, and this was over on the Polygon chain. But yeah, just make a deposit and then withdraw and then reject approvals on that. Uh, if you guys want to make this additional transaction, if you don't want to take on that risk, I don't blame you. And then next, it could probably be a good idea to mint a NFT on the Polygon ZK EVM. Who knows? It could be one of the qualifications, but grabbing and minting one of the ZK squares. These are one of the random NFTs on Polygon. I'm sure there are a couple of others, but you can use different wallets for each of these. Um, especially with the airdrop speculation. Like on Arbitrum, what I did is I actually used a couple of different wallets and three different wallets ended up qualifying. Uh, the reason why you want to use different wallets is because if you take a look at the Arbitrum article, there was a maximum of 10,250. So if you did a bunch of transactions and messed around and got the maximum qualification on that wallet, you could have maximum only gotten 10,250. Now, my, kid you not, that's still about $15,000. Who cares? That's, that's a lot of money. But if you did that and spread that on three different wallets and it made the qualification on each, you would have 3 x the amount you got. So just something to keep in mind, uh, just food for thought. But again, in summary, I'll leave links in the description below. Do a bridge transaction on Orbiter do a bridge transaction on Polygon ZK EVM bridge. If you can uh, do a swap on Manta swap, do a swap on Dove, maybe even provide liquidity on these. Also deposit and withdraw on OVX, do some deposits, withdrawals, pools on uh, quick swap, and also mint a random NFT like ZK squares. There's probably a couple of other ones out there, but this is one that I, I thought was kind of goofy. And you also have like coconut swap, but this one's newer. Um, so yeah, I'm not really messing with it. Maybe you can just make a simple swap and then reject approvals, but <laughs> that's something that uh, is entirely up to you what you want to do. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed this airdrop tutorial. Uh, I know Bitcoin and altcoins, they are kind of consolidating and then it can kind of be rough from time to times. But remember guys, there's always another bull market and a, another airdrop potential around the corner. So make sure you mess around with this stuff. Um, don't get too stressed out. Go touch some grass from time to time. And if you guys want to jump in the Discord, it's the Patreon link in the description below. You can chat with a bunch of other DeFi DGens just like you. And you can also support the channel. Proverbs chapter 13, verses 6. Righteousness guards the person of integrity but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Be good, be righteous, be safe. Peace.